Okay, so good morning, everybody. My dear students, welcome to our virtual class. Um, before I start, uh, may I request everyone to mute your microphone to avoid unnecessary noise and distractions and um, uh, turn off your video as well. And please observe uh, proper behavior during our uh, virtual class. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself to you. I am uh, Maria Ana C. Robles. You can call me Mom Ann. Okay, uh, I am your uh, online learning coordinator or your OLC uh, for this course. And I am one of the faculty members of um, College of Arts and Sciences at AMA Malolos. Okay, so for our uh, course code, we have here uh, uh, Eng 6320 for uh, 2113T Philippine literature. Actually, this is uh, uh, section one okay, of, uh, uh, of this course. Okay. Now, our topic for this morning is introduction to Philippine literature and short story elements. Uh, for this, uh, for this uh, session, we will be discussing the introduction uh, to the Philippine literature, okay? Now, uh, for our course objectives or for our learning objectives, at the end of the discussion, we will be able to explain what literature is, and then differentiate the two major divisions of literature by giving examples and also give the importance of literature. Okay, so let us now begin. So welcome to our uh, virtual class again. Now, uh, uh, before I proceed, I would like to share with you a, a quote from Jenny Chansey. According to her, reading a great work of literature can truly be likened to having a conversation with a great mind. Okay, so let's find out if it is true. Okay, now, uh, let us first define literature. So, so what is literature? Okay, you have something in mind uh, what literature means, okay? Now, um, etymologically speaking, uh, the word literature is derived from uh, Latin word litera, which means letters. So when you say etymology, uh, it means the origin or the derivation of a certain word, okay? Now, again, the word literature is derived from the Latin word litera, which means letters. So writers make use of letters in writing literary works, okay? And the term literature is used to describe uh, written and sometimes spoken materials because this literature is the collection of creative writings of a particular nation, people, group, culture, language, or period in history. Now, novels, short stories, epic, poems, fables, legends, including biographies and paper uh, published in academic journals on a particular subject are examples of literature or what we call literary works, okay? Now, uh, literature has been defined uh, differently by uh, various writers, okay? So I have here uh, four definitions. Now, first, uh, literature is an artistic representation of life in different forms of expressions, okay? Meaning to say uh, literature or literary works are creatively uh, or artistically uh, represented 
by uh, the different authors and writers with uh, which can be described as written and sometimes spoken materials okay it is also a preserved writings of a country or people preserved writings what do you mean by preserved writings uh, uh, preserved because uh, these writings or uh, literary works are handed down from one generation to another. So this has been maintained and kept alive up to this time. And as I said a while ago, it is the embodiment of nations, traditions, customs, and cultures. So this is the collection of creative writings of a particular uh, a particular country, uh, people, group, uh, culture, language, or even period in history. And lastly, uh, it is a vehicle of experiences, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and attitudes about a given subject. Because literature is where we can uh, transport our uh, experiences, our thoughts, uh, our feelings, and even our attitudes, okay? Now, uh, another uh, definition here, additional information, is that it is the body of work, either written, oral, or visual, containing imaginative language that realistically portrays thought, emotions, and experiences of the human condition. Another one here is that it is a, a, a product of a particular culture that concretizes man's array of values, emotions, actions, and ideas. So it is therefore a creation of human experiences that tells about people and their world. Okay, now short, uh, literature is life itself, okay? It's the life of people in a certain nation, in a certain country. Like us Philippines, we have our own literature and we call it Philippine literature. Now, why is literature important? So what are the importance of literature? Okay, first, better appreciation of our literary heritage, okay? So in here, there is a recognition, there is, a, there is an appreciation of uh, our literary heritage or our cultural heritage. And it's, it is also a transmitter of values, okay? Uh, events as we read them in literature make us look uh, at ourselves and live through the experiences of the characters. So we glean from the stories, the morals that lead to good life, like honesty, uh, respect, love of country or patriotism, what else, justice, uh, honor, and some of uh, values that we have in our life, okay? Another importance is that it is a preserver of ideals, customs, and traditions because literature is our link of the past. Now, we in here, we get a glimpse of our ancestors' way of life by reading their stories and poems and uh, reflecting on their practice, beliefs, and attitudes make us understand more deeply our roots, thereby uh, inspiring us to strengthen our ideals, uh, our customs and traditions at the present, okay? So that, that literature is our link of the past. And uh, literature also is a mir mirror of culture uh, because uh, it reflects the cultures of different races. Now, 
uh, uh, those who do not have uh, the resources to travel uh, personally and personally observe the ways of people from other parts of the world may enrich their knowledge through literature by re reading uh, some literary works. So knowing how people from the other side of the planet live broadens our perception of life and humanity. Okay, another importance is that it is an agent of change. Agent of change. Literature is agent of change. Uh, what else? It is also a source of pleasure. Okay, now, uh, like other forms of art, literature entertains and gives pleasure. Now, some people uh, read literature for fun while uh, others read for wisdom they get from it okay what else okay so uh, i have here additional importance of literature uh, studying literature is like looking at the mirror of life where man's experiences her innermost thoughts and feelings are reflected and through literature we learn the culture of people across time and space we we understand not only the past life of a nation but also its present and moreover we we become uh, familiar not only with the culture of neighboring countries but also with that of others living very far from us okay now what are the qualities of a good literature now it should have theme it should have or it should uh, it should uh, explain uh, the relevance of the theme and then uh, it should have a compelling idea it should have a good style and of course correct grammar and it should sound genuine okay so take note of these qualities of a good literature Now, uh, literature is divided into two types, into two major types or two major divisions, okay? So we have here uh, prose and poetry, okay? Now, what is prose and what is poetry? Now, prose is a discourse which uses sentences and paragraphs to express ideas feelings and actions. In other words, this prose is written in an ordinary form, making use of sentences and paragraphs to express ideas, feelings, and thoughts, okay? Whereas poetry refers to writing or writings in verse with the use of rhythm, rhyme, and characterized by melodious tone, okay? Poetry, just like poems, okay? So as we all know, it is written with verse, rhyme, and measurement, okay? Now, uh, whether it is prose or poetry, we have the what we call literary genre. It can be fiction or nonfiction. Now, when you say fiction, it portrays imaginary people caught in imaginary situations. It is usually read for pleasure, okay? And fiction is intended to expand and refine our life and quicken our senses, okay? So nonfiction, on the other hand, gives actual facts and information. So it is not invented or make up. So in other words, um, for better understanding, fiction is a made up or imagined story. So it is not true and it does not exist in the real world like fantasy, like uh, fairy tales, like uh, legends and myths, okay? They are just uh, based on the imagination of the writers. 
Non-fiction, on the other hand, is an account of a subject which is presented as facts. So it is based on truth. So it exists. So it is real and mostly based on true to life story. So it includes essays, articles, textbooks, manuals, encyclopedias, and others. Okay. So whether it is prose or poetry, it can be a fiction or non-fiction. Now let's move on to the different types of prose. Okay. So prose again is written in an ordinary form, making use of sentences and paragraphs. So these are some of the different types of prose. Okay. So let's discuss them one by one. So short story, it focuses on a single main incident and is usually read in one sitting. That makes it short. And then we have novel. It is a long narrative prose divided into chapters and legend or alamat in Tagalog. Children are fond of reading legend. It talks about origins of a certain thing or uh, people, okay? And then myth, it deals with the stories about gods and goddesses, mythology. And then, pro, and then we have here fable. Uh, this is a, a story wherein the characters are animals with human attributes, like the story of a turtle and the monkey. Okay, uh, the fox and the ant. Okay, those are some of the examples of fable. And then parable, these are stories usually uh, biblical in nature, or these are stories taken from the Bible, like the uh, David and Goliath, uh, the parable, uh, I mean, the, the parable of uh, a good son, something like that. Then we have folk tale. It is a narrative prose told for amusement and instructional value. And then we have an anecdote or anecdote. It is an interesting, amusing incident generally characterized by human interest. Anecdote. And then chronicle is a historical account of facts or events in the order of time. So it is detailed but without analysis or interpretation. And then we have here biography and autobiography. Now, biography is a record or records the facts and events of a person's life that is written by another person. Whereas autobiography is uh, an account of one's life written by the person himself. Autobiography. Okay. And then uh, another form of prose is an essay. It is a critical literary composition about a topic or subject from a limited, often personal point of view. Uh, essay is an expository writing wherein you will expose your feelings, your thoughts, and your ideas. And then news, okay? News is an account of everyday events in society, government, science, or industry, okay? And uh, oration is a formal treatment of a subject and is intended for the delivery in public, just like speech delivery, okay? And another one here is play, which is also known as the drama. So it is written to be performed on stage, okay? So uh, it, 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 uh, play is usually divided into acts and scenes. And then we have diary. Do you write your personal diary? Okay. Uh, it is uh, the daily record of events and experiences in uh, one's life, okay? Or in the author's life. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So those are some of the different forms of prose. 
let's move on to poetry. Now, there are three kinds of poetry. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have narrative, dramatic, and lyric poetry. So the narrative poetry is uh, a kind of poetry that tells a story. Dramatic poetry is meant to be performed on stage. And then lyric poetry is a kind of poetry that is intended to be sung to the accompaniment of a lyre or any string instrument. <coughs> now, what are the different forms of lyric poetry? So we have here folk songs or awaiting bayan in Tagalog. Folk songs are um, poems intended to be sung. Meaning to say it can be sung or it can be recited, just like the famous Leron Leron Sinta. It can be sung or it can be recited or uh, Paru Parum Bukid. Okay, if you remember that. And then sonnets. It is composed of 14 lines dealing with emotions and idea. And then elegy. It is a mournful poem which expresses feelings of grief and melancholy in which the theme is about death of someone. So in other words, elegy is a poem for the dead. And then we have here the ode is a poem of praise or glorifying an event or an individual. And then psalm or psalms or dalit. It is a sacred song or poem used in praising or worshiping God. And we have corridos. It measures uh, measures of eight syllables or what we call octosyllabic and uh, recited to a marital beat. For example, uh, the, the Ibong Adarna, the song of Ibong Adarna the famous literary uh, story among Filipino, among Filipinos, Ibong Adarn. Okay, so that is for lyric poetry. And then narrative poetry, again, these are poem that narrates a story or incident which follows chronological order or proper sequencing of events. Now, uh, for narrative poetry, we have ballad. It is, it is a simple and short poem composed to be sung. Okay, and then epic. Epic, it is a long narrative poem about heroes and gods. And then metrical romance. It is a love story in verse with the adventure of knights and lords and their ladies during the age of chivalry. And then we have the metrical tale. It is a poem about ordinary fox origin. And lastly, we have the dramatic poetry. Again, it encompasses highly emotional story that is written in verse and meant to be recited. And since this is dramatic poetry, it includes dramatic monologue and rhyme verse, okay? So uh, those are the two forms or the two major divisions of literature, the prose and poetry, and uh, whether it is prose or poetry, it can either be fiction or nonfiction, okay? Now, uh, be before I end, I would like to share with you a, a, a quotation about literature given by Northrop Fryer. So according to him, literature speaks the language of the imagination and the study of literature is supposed to train 
and improve the imagination. <clears throat> uh, literature adds to reality, does not simply describe it. So in, it enriches uh, the necessary uh, competencies that daily life requires and provides. And in this respect, it irrigates the deserts that our lives have already become according to C.S. Lewis, okay? So uh, that concludes our short discussion about the introduction of literature. Uh, thank you for attending our virtual class. Uh, keep safe everyone and God bless us all. Thank you, keep safe.